about open data from my perspective uh, as a former technologist and now trying to bridge that gap once again. Um, who's ever worked with open data? Show of hands. Michelle, can you define open data for folks? Yeah. Um, oh, this is what open data looks like, and I'll come to the definition soon. Um, it looks a little boring, but the, uh, it, there's a helpful syntax coloring here, and the, the red tags and the orange tags and the blue tags um, describe what type of data it is, and the black text is the data itself. And this is uh, this is what's inside a shape file if you open it up in a text reader. This is what's inside an Excel spreadsheet if you open it up in a string text reader. So this is this is data in its, raw, in its most raw form, and pretty much guarantee that everyone here has used open data, um, but through tools. So why do we actually care about this stuff? Um, it's because of the impact that it can have. Um, when we put it to work. So the top left is a map made, I think, in 2012 um, uh, by a small team in Philadelphia that um, asked for some PDFs of uh, the city's tax delinquency data. Um, there is a huge backlog of unpaid tax, uh, property taxes in Philadelphia. Um, the prevailing <coughs> wisdom was that it was not worth collecting because these deadbeat landlords were never going to pay it. Um, and so someone went and uh, calculated the economic value of all of the back taxes um, and categorized them by how many years they've been delinquent. Um, it blew my mind the first time I saw it, the, the red part in that key is uh, properties that haven't paid taxes in 30 years. Um, so each of those colors is a, is a decade of taxes owed the city. Um, and so they went and painfully scraped all, all of the data out of a PDF. So they copied it, cleaned it up, and put it into a map. Um, from there, they really were able to spark um, a change in media and in a storm of press um, around the issue, culminating in last year um, uh, an overhaul of tax delinquency and policies in the city. Um, they appointed a commission to pursue these taxes in particular. Um, they were able to show to the city um, and to the public that collecting these taxes was going to create more value than it would cost to do the work. Um, and so this is the outcome because you know the basis, the legislation, that's what we're actually trying to do with data. Since 2011, which is I believe when um, the city of Chicago appointed the nation's chief data officer, there's been an explosion of open data portals, chief data officers, um, a lot of activity around this topic. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, it's, we don't really care about these data sets. Thousands are released every year, and it's fantastic. Um, it's really what we can do with them that's going to matter to people every day. And I think there's a, a framework that's maybe been missing in our dialogue around open data that I'd like to offer. Um, which is that uh, view masters are green. Does anyone remember them from? <laughs> okay, so on the top row, if you follow, this is kind of the story from this slide put into a three step sequence. So, first, you've got the resource, and then you have journalists or applications that translate it into, into something that makes sense to people. And then at the end of it, we actually get an outcome that lasts. Um, and I would posit that every data set to be valuable needs a translator, it needs a viewer. So you've got this circle disk and like maybe you throw it at your little brother, but you really can't do anything else with it. <laughs> if you put it in the Viewmaster though and look at it through that tool, it gives us really interesting images of scenery. 